Spicy margarita. And according to executive bartender at Taste My Aruba, you should skip the spicy margs. She encouraged people to instead opt with a glass of wine. If you do have jalapenos, why not make it? Why do you have jalapenos on display if you're not gonna be using them? What's up guys, this is Alan again, back with another video. And today we're gonna check out this article. It's called, Bartenders Admit There's 10 Drinks You Should Never Order at a Busy Bar. This was written pretty recent, June 6, 2024. This is uh, a European format. Actually, no, this is actually the rest of the world <laughs> format. But let's take a look at this list and let's see if I agree or disagree with them. Mixologists have made it clear that they don't appreciate boozers ordering complicated concoctions. I've heard of bartenders who work in bars with blenders and then they complain about people ordering blended drinks. But it's like, why do you have it displayed there then? If you have anyone to be upset with, it'll be the management. Also, complicated is very subjective. It really depends, like what's complicated? Muddling mint or something complicated like a Ramos Gin Fizz? Because if you work in a Peruvian place, that has a blender, then peaceful sours are not that complicated. So it really depends on establishment, whether or not the bar is designed for those kind of drinks can really change what's complicated and what's not. A host of bartenders who are sick of being worked to the bone have now opened up to Business Insider about the 10 worst drinks you can order on in a hectic bar. Long Island iced tea. Okay, so this is the guest of first one. I highly disagree. I used to work at a nightclub. That's where I got my start. A long island iced tea, once you get the technique down of holding four bottles at once, this is actually one of the fastest drinks you can make. It takes a little bit longer than like a rum and coke. Okay, there's nothing quite like a long island iced tea to get the party started. That's a misc of vodka, tequila, light rum, triple sec gin, and a splash of cola. However, people tend to don't exactly... Yeah, like I said, I, I really disagree with this big no-no, especially at a busy bar. I mean, I worked at a nightclub where people are always ordering, like outside of, you know, the built drinks, vodka cran, rum and coke, gin and tonic. The Long Island iced tea would probably be one of the most popular cocktails. Also the variations such as an adios or a long beach. An adios is basically a Long Island but with blue curacao instead of triple sec. And essentially blue curacao is triple sec. It's the same thing as triple sec, but with blue food coloring. So it is the same drink. And it's topped off with Sprite instead of Coke. So it's skeleton, it's essentially the same drink. Like uh, Tokyo tea would have Midori. I highly disagree with this. It is one of the fastest drinks you can make. So I don't, I disagree with this. Mojito, a few mojitos make the world go round, but they also make the bartenders shift a nightmare. For those who don't know, the tipple is a traditional Cuban punch of white rum, sugar, lime juice, soda water, and mint. A proper mojito should feature hand muddled limes and mint, plus whatever flavor you might be, blah, blah, blah. Okay, I also disagree with this. A mojito should not feature hand muddled limes and mint. This comes from this old Bacardi commercial that became very popular in the 90s of this bartender like muddling the mint and limes in the glass. You should not do that because one, when you muddle limes, you extract the bitter oils from the peels. So that's not good. When you're thinking about summer, you're not thinking about anything bitter. You, you want something that's refreshing. And the second thing is when you muddle mint, you bruise the mint, which causes it to release something called polyphenol oxidase. And this will oxidize the mint and make it bitter. Um, the proper way of making a mojito is just simply putting the rum, lime juice, and simple syrup. And then you rub the rim of the glass with a few mint leaves. You tear it and you toss it in. Put some crushed ice, stir it a little bit, soda water, top it off with some crushed ice, and then slap some mint, put it on a top, and then a straw. The reason why you just rub the mint around the rim is because mint is a, it's an aroma, it's not a flavor. You don't need to press it into the drink. The reason why people might muddle it is because the mojito historically did come from the mint julep, which does require muddled mint. And the reason is because a mint julep is just bourbon, simple syrup, and mint. So it doesn't have anything to counter the sugar. So you do need to muddle the mint 
to make it bitter. So uh, if you think about it, a mint julep is essentially a type of old fashioned, but instead of bitters, the bittering agent actually comes from the mint. White Russian. You might struggle to even find one of these on a menu these days, seen as though a lot of establishments have renamed the rich cocktails as a white Ukrainian amid that you I've never heard of this. A lot of these drinks are politically incorrect. Anyways, dipples made with vodka, coffee liqueur, cream, and ice served in an old-fashioned glass. So that's correct. Robinson reminded people that bars don't usually have heavy cream lying around. So if you fancy it being considerate, don't order white Russian. First, um, how do you know if the bar has heavy cream? It doesn't hurt to ask. Also, it is a very heavy, rich drink anyway, so I don't recommend ordering it at a nightclub or a high volume place because once you drink it, you're going to start to fall asleep because it's, it's a very calorically dense drink. She added, save your bartender the time of going to having to check to see if they have some in the back and save your stomach and makes you blah, blah, blah. I mean, if you work at a bar, you should know if you have cream or not. This shouldn't even be an issue. Like if somebody asked me if I can make a white Russian, I should already know on the top of my head if I have heavy cream or not. So it, does, it shouldn't make any sense if you have to go and check. And it's also a very fast drink to make. It's, so, it's three ingredients. You just build it directly into the glass. Like it, how long does it take to make that? Most people are able to make this at home. It doesn't require any advanced bartending techniques. Spicy margarita. For those who enjoy the spice of life, there's only one drink to order on a Saturday night, a spicy margarita, which is made up of tequila, orange liqueur, lime juice, agave syrup, and of course, something to kick with it, perfectly wet whistle to start dancing on tables. They are very Instagrammable too, so you can understand why the drinks are always flying off the shelves. But according to executive bartender at Taste My Aruba, Zuley Duran, you should skip the spicy margs in a busy bar. She encouraged people to instead opt with a glass of wine, which is weird. Most bars, their wine selections are not that great. So the wine is probably gonna be bad. Also, just like the Bloody Mary and just like the White Russian, either you can make it or you can't. So if you don't have jalapenos around, then you can't make it. You just say, hey, sorry, I can't make that. I don't have jalapenos. But if you do have jalapenos, why not make it? Why did you prepare jalapenos if you're not going to be making it? It's like going back to the blender. Why do you have a blender if you're not going to be blending drinks? Why do you have jalapenos on display if you're not going to be using them? Also, a spicy margarita, you don't have to muddle the jalapenos. You just build a margarita just like normal. You put the jalapenos inside and you just shake really hard. The ice would be muddling the jalapenos for you. So it doesn't really take that much longer. I mean, if it does even take longer. But the fact is, either you can make it or you don't. Anything with egg whites. This might be the first of the list that I kinda might agree with, but of course it's more nuanced. If you're planning on ordering anything containing egg whites, just know you are going to make an enemy of the person serving you for life. According to the head bartender at the rum house, Nick Jackson, asking for the likes of an Amaretto Sour or a Gin Fizz is a cardinal sin when the venue you're visiting is packed to the rafters. That creamy egg white foam just doesn't make itself, you know. Jackson said that making cocktails which contain egg whites is very labor intensive and requires several minutes of preparation, which will no doubt have the customers behind you tightening and tapping their feet. Okay, this is where the nuance part comes from. I mentioned this earlier. If you have a blender and crush ice, you can actually make an egg white drink faster than you can shake a margarita. You put the ingredients in, a piece of sour, some crushed ice, you put it in the machine, like a Hamilton Beach blender, blitz it for about six seconds, strain it over the glass. You can do that way faster. I've worked in a Peruvian restaurant before and that's how we did it and the machines are so strong they could make an egg white foam way better than a human can shake we were cranking out peaceful sours it's like nothing and we only had one blender and our bar was huge because it was so fast it was actually not even an issue but yes if you do not have a blender and you have to handshake it then it could be a problem okay next up pina coladas 
All right, I already have an idea where this is going. Most people like pina coladas in game cotton rain. Ha! Huh? Mixologists reckon this drink is the drink which should exclusively be reserved for people on a beach or at a very least on a sun lounger rather than at a busy bar in the city center. The rum, cream of coconut, and pineapple juice cocktail is a firm favorite with a lot of boozers, but just be aware that people serving it to you are wishing you'd have emigrated when you order one. Zach Pace, who is a beverage expert at 10 Rooms, said, please don't make the bartender fire up a blender in the middle of a crazy service. Okay, I highly disagree with this. One, this is like one of those drinks that we mentioned earlier is either you can make it or you can't because you need cream of coconut, which is not most bars, unless they're like a tiki bar, it, you don't really carry cream of coconut around. And two, the blender is, I don't know why these bartenders have this strong, they don't like using a blender because I there's places where I wish I had a blender. You can make drinks so fast. I worked in places where we had to hand shake our Ramos Gin Fizzes. That can take between six and 20 minutes, depending on how busy and how long the queue is. All right, having a blender is, it is one of the technological advances in bartending. All you do is put the ingredients in, some ice, blend it, and just pour it. It takes just as long as shaking a margarita. Like, I don't know what the big deal is and what the stigma is. I think the bartenders who are complaining about using blenders have never made a Ramos Gin Fizz before. People have no idea how great these things are. Caffeine cocktails. Okay, let's see what this is, because there's a lot of uh, caffeine cocktails that, depending what the caffeine source is. Most people get the caffeine fixes first thing in the morning or at some point throughout the day, but if you're hoping to grab a pick-me-up while out of town, you've got another thing coming. Whether it's an Irish coffee or espresso martini, bartenders all seem to be in agreement that they sh just aren't appropriate to be ordering in a busy bar. Just think how long it takes for them to place those couple of coffee beans on top of a for God's sake, the strong lingering espresso means bartenders have to wash the shaker extra carefully, which can be time consuming. Again, this is one of those drinks that either you can make it or you can't, if you have espresso machines or not. And if you have espresso liqueur, then it's just like any other drink that you shake. The last place I worked at, we did have to make this. We don't have it on the menu, but also I worked in a fine dining area. It wasn't that high volume. Like we don't have, Friday nights like it every Friday night is just as busy as a Tuesday night because 99% of the time it's reservation based so we didn't really have rushes and there was only four seats at the bar and also espresso martinis were extremely rare and two we did have a very very fast espresso uh, machine I mean it, it's probably the fastest espresso machine I've ever seen but yeah usually whenever somebody orders a an espresso martini, one of the captains will grab the espresso for us and then bring it to us. And by the time it arrives, we just shake it and strain it. It's like not a big deal. I think coordinating that might slow things down. But in many places, if you do get a lot of orders of, of espresso martinis, I would just batch, just make a large batch of espresso. There's a place in um, the San Francisco that is known for espresso martinis. They just make it in the morning and then they chill it. So it just becomes another ingredient that you make into a cocktail, just espresso, vodka, simple syrup, and maybe some kind of coffee liqueur or a Amaro. And I disagree that espresso makes the shaker smells. It's water soluble, you just rinse it on the sink. It'll go away. Layered shots, they look the business and make a lovely mix in your mouth, but later shots are a nightmare for bartenders. Sunshine Foss, founder and CEO of boutique liquor store Happy Cork, explained that ordering a tray of these in a busy establishment is just not cool. As they require multiple spirits and precision pouring, it's not a quick and easy task to create them. Bartenders are already under pressure to serve things quickly. Ordering layered shots just doesn't make sense for anyone. Stick to tequila, sprinkle of salt. Okay, I might agree with this, but also I haven't seen later shots being that popular since like the late 90s, early 2000s, like the B-52. I really haven't seen people order these anymore, but yeah, they do take a long time to layer carefully. Ordering a tray of these, I do, would, I would agree that it would be extremely time consuming. But on the other hand, I just, don't see this happening that often that 
to have any opinion on it. Like I really don't see a lot of later shots anymore. Personalized drinks. And finally, you should never ever or think about requesting a personalized drink that you've just thought of when you're in a crowded nightclub. Bartenders explain that this question is the bane of their life. And nine times out of 10, they're going to have to shoot you down if it's a busy night. Booking a cocktail making class or just make trying out your own mixology drinks is much better way to find the beverage of your dreams. And if you do ask for something out of order, please make sure you don't make it into a monologue. Okay, I actually agree with this. I've actually had this guest, they said, I want a rum punch, which is actually a real drink. So I make a rum punch and uh, he was like, what is in here? I was like, that's a rum punch. He said, no, where's the ginger ale? Where's the thing? I was like, I was like what? What are you talking about? And he brings out a phone and say, no, this is a rum. I was like, that's not a rum punch. So he starts giving you these ingredients and it was like on his notepad on his phone. And he was like ordering this, explain to me. I was like, I can't make it like that because I don't have these ingredients. I don't know who made it for you before. And he was like, oh no, it was at the other bar. And I'm like, then why did you assume that we can make it here? And that goes into another related thing that to the personalized drinks is ordering a drink from another bar, like a signature drink. Like I've had a guest, she ordered like, I want like a quick and easy. And I'm like, what the heck is a quick and easy? And she's like, I, and I was like, going to the back, looking on the phone. I was like, what the heck is a quick and, and it's like, oh no, she's like, it's, they make it in this bar in Manhattan. And I'm, that's in the other side of the country. How would I know what that is? Like, do you know what's in it? Let's see if I can make it. And she's like, no, I don't know what's in it. And I was like, how am I gonna make it if you don't, you know, if you can't you give me the instruction to make it. So yeah, like I would say like, looking at this list, this, the last one is the only one that I actually agree with the personalized drink. But again, this is extremely rare. Uh, I, yeah. But anyways, like what kind of drinks do you guys order on a busy night? Do you order a mojito? Adios? Long Island? Let me know in the comments below and I'll see you guys on the next video.